Hey everybody. So yeah, the last couple days was pretty interesting, of course. Um, last week I was drinking so many of those nitro cold brews, and you saw me drinking them. I was like drinking them by the by the dozen, well, by the at least maybe two cans, because they're pretty aggressive. Um, then I decided not to drink as many this week and it wasn't like I had any headaches. Like I could feel electricity in my head, but it was like I knew that my body was trying to replenish from the aggressive manually tripping the adrenaline hormone to bring up the energy, to bring up stuff. Not that I needed to do that, but I really wanted to get some stuff done. I really wanted to get a thought process out. And so what I did was I drank a bunch of those nitro cold brews of which, yes, it listed a lot of different gifts. I definitely felt, uh, well, obviously I felt awake, but I really just helped me make connections faster. And then this week I decided that I'm not going to do it. And so I needed to take a nap. <laughs> and so I, you know, so when you do manually trip your, your, adren your adrenal glands, so you can get that temporary high, yeah, over a long period of time, if you're not regenerating, yeah, you're going to deplete yourself. So that's just another confirmation to me that uh, the drugs out there, whether it's in the coffee on a very like aggressive basis, like you can have coffee every day and your body will recalibrate. When, but when you do too much of anything that biochemically makes you feel a certain way, your body has to be able to recalibrate and replenish itself. And if not, that's where people's energy gets siphoned away. And that's a form of human sacrifice, okay? And so so then I was thinking about like this whole thing with immortality, you know, immortality, like the immortal cells in a tumor that they figured out in 1950, and they don't say anything more about it because they did a test on someone unknowingly. Um, and then like the little immortal cells that are on this earth, you know, they're not literally immortal, like they couldn't be destroyed by a volcano or by a predator, but they wouldn't die from old age. And the reason why immortal cells or immortal microbes won't die from old age is because if their environment is relatively stable, they will still be able to live in that environment. And if, and if they know how to galvanize the specific nutrients to keep them stable and they're in an environment that has that gives them access to those nutrients, then they'll live. If I didn't have food, if I didn't have salt, if I didn't have sugar, if I didn't have water, if I didn't have oxygen, then I would not be immortal. Immortality is based upon knowing what to keep in your body. Immortality is knowing how to release the excess. Immortality is just maintaining your existence by understanding what factors involve evolution and what factors and factors involve de-evolution and then how do you balance between the two okay that's all immortality is it's not like some you know, like i said it's not like some god sitting on a flipping throne with a scepter saying that he's impervious and completely immune and infallible to anything no um, immortality is the ability to maintain your existence by bringing in the necessary chemistry. But that is knowledge. Where does knowledge come from? Well, this knowledge came from beings that were like, okay, we're, there's some cavemen on this earth, and here's this thing with Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve were cavemen. The gods came down, and I'm going to rewrite the Bible right now. The gods came down. They saw a race of beings that were cavemen. They didn't, weren't really very highly civilized, not very intelligent, working with rudimentary instruments like rocks and sticks and whatever. And they're like, okay, we're going to go and exploit. Now, there's a bunch of different stories. Like I listened last night to something about the Anunnaki. Hey, John. Hey, everybody. And, you know, they said that Anunnaki came down, they had a bunch of demigods that they were using as slaves, and then the, those demigods revolted against the masters, and then, the, then I guess the Anunnaki used the humans as slaves. And so, and so anytime, so here's the thing, for you to be used as a slave, you have to understand what you're being a slave for, okay? So it means you have to be given knowledge. If you're going to be a slave to something, like your job or like your job, you've got to be taught how to do your job, Right? Right. Well, that comes with payment. 
All right. And so back then, you know, way back in antiquity, it wasn't like they had money and currency. How do they do payment? Well, the gods wanted their pound of flesh. They wanted their the energy. They wanted the essence. They wanted the life force of the humans. And yes, you've seen movies like Apocalypto or you've seen movies like Indiana Jones where they're putting someone on the altar or throwing them in the volcano and the gods are like all happy because they got their pound of flesh, they got their currency, they got their energy and they can live longer or whatever, right? And because everybody survives on energy. And so, and so, and so, okay, so the humans then sacrifice, so they couldn't really sell immortality to the humans because if you sold immortality, then they're not going to want to die because how are you going to, how are you going to pay, you know, the gods to teach you how to do something if like, you know, how, how can you teach gods or how, how can you teach the, the slave to do something if, uh, if you tell them that you're supposed to live forever. Okay. And so keeping them in a mortal state where they expect to die and then, and then them taking one of their family members, whoever it is, and, and giving them to the gods or, get, or, or their firstborn, like you heard in like Genesis. And so they give up their firstborn, but then they want, they want payment. They want some kind of atonement. They want kind of, some kind of gift. If they're going to give up their family member, like grandma, like grandpa, like sister, brother, to cancer, that's what the GoFundMe accounts. That's the atonement. That is the gods getting, that's the gods paying the people for giving them, for sacrificing somebody in their family so they can learn this trade. Okay. And then the, of course the slaves do get something back as well, but they also get something back for giving up uh, their, one of their loved ones or one of their own or a virgin or whatever. Okay, so that's how really the, the, the bartering system happened was way back in antiquity. So then with the whole thing with Adam and Eve, so Adam and Eve were cavemen. The gods came down, were doing their thing. They had their plants and those plants gave them indefinite life, gave them immortality. Um, there were some demigods on the planet and there's some immortals. And I'm sure the demigods were like, oh, okay, well, I'm jealous of the immortals. So they go and sneak into the garden and go eat the plant. Maybe the, maybe a snake talked to them. Maybe it didn't. I don't know. Remember, a lot of these allegories are written by somebody who had an agenda. Okay. And so then they stole the apple. They realized they were naked. They went and put clothes on. And then the gods were like, okay, they saw somebody was wearing clothes over people that weren't wearing clothes. We're like, why are you wearing clothes? Oh, you got, you took the apple from the tree of knowledge. And then they were banished from the kingdom. And then of course, the, the Adam and Eve took on the, the, the chemistry, the characteristics of that apple. And they were able to bear children. And then then it's all history from there and you can, you know, figure out what's true and what's not if you read all the different stories. But I'll tell you what, the Bible has been written and rewritten and written and rewritten and also the 17 influential families had their had their 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 say in it to where they can direct the population. And so and so really the Greek gods, they they were the ones that taught us bartering, they taught us currency. They taught us human sacrifice. I mean, you hear about sacrifice on TV. Oh, they sacrifice this, they sacrifice that. Well, sacrifice isn't just like, oh, you sacrifice your time or sacrifice. I mean, it's like your money is your time. It's your pound of flesh. You know, it's you're sacrificing your husband and you're sacrificing your wife to go to work. You're sacrificing your wife to have a baby. So she takes part of herself and gives it to a baby and then she dies down the road and everyone's okay with it. And that's how they sell that's how they sell human sacrifices. They build it into the system to where they think, oh, yeah, you're supposed to die. And, you know, you're supposed to die. So there's no way we're going to sell immortality because also, too, that's how they extract the gifts. That's how they extract the gifts. That's how they extract that the biochemistry is the gifts. Um, when you do get access to a type of immortality and you're able to pluck your own stuff, yeah, you'll be very talented. But then you can also be very talented being immortal, like a not immortal, but a mortal, which means that a person who is set to die at some point, they're going to be supernova. -y. You've seen your friends and family. They reach their pinnacle, their peak of their of their profession. They get all these accolades. They get the Nobel Peace Prize. Oh, yeah, they're making a shoes ton of money. They have their nice house, nice, their nice car. They're cute kids. They all look really cute. Everyone's happy playing the game. 
And so, yeah, they, they can extract so much out of a person in like a hundred years or less than that. And then guess what? Oh, it's okay to die. It's okay to, that grandma is going to pass away. That's the sacrifice. That's the built-in sacrifice that if you don't sell immortality and you sell mortality, there's no one's going to fight against you. No one's going to fight you to, uh, to, to, to sacrifice. No one's going to, you know, no one's going to fight you. But, but if, you sell, if you sell immortality to the people that you want a pound of flesh from, you think some immortal person's going to want to go walk to the altar, you know, and, and have a knife release their energy? Do you think an immortal person is going to want to throw themselves in a volcano so they can appease the gods? Okay, so you got to understand how, how this stuff works. And that's why Jilly Juice is so different because, first of all, we're dealing with pain. We're dealing with everything that you have been told not to deal with. And we understand now what human sacrifice is. Now me going, now me writing this chapter and I'm going so slow trying to figure out how do I explain this? I mean, I could talk about Joe versus the volcano and Tom Hanks, right? Okay, how much Hollywood am I going to bring into this? No, let's bring this back to the freaking Bible. Excuse my language. Let's bring it back to the Bible, to all the stories. And then let's merge Greek mythology and Greek history to the Bible. And then realize, oh, wait, hold on a second. There is a merging because there's Corinthians, there's Romans. I mean, there's so much Greek history, even in the Bible, with the different parables and the John 3.16 and what, you know. And so you know that there is definitely a connection between Greek history and Greek mythology and the Bible. And so and so now I'm going to say here, here's, here's a different story about Adam and Eve. The fall of mankind actually happened when they nailed Jesus to the cross. And then using Jesus as a martyr then cementing, further cementing your buy-in that every single time a person dies, everyone goes and holds a vigil every year. The holidays are all about celebrating human sacrifice. You celebrate human sacrifice. Hey, grandma dies. Okay, let's, everybody, everybody, let's go have a party. Let's go have a funeral. Let's have a wake. Go, go, go fund me account so everybody can bring have atonement. Or I'm sorry I didn't help you out with the J-juice. I'm sorry I didn't tell you about the J-juice, but here, I'll give you some money as a Thomas so I can relieve my guilt for being so selfish, not giving life to your friends and family. Yeah, I'm kind of pissy because you know about the J-juice and then people are then just finding ways to justify why they won't share J-juice, why they want to keep it to themselves and then watch their friends and family die. Now, I get it that if you, you show people and they don't get it, that's fine. But some of you don't even want to even show your friends and family. You want to keep it to yourself or deny it because it's easier to watch somebody die and take their funds. Oh, yeah. I know many people are waiting for their friends and family or waiting for their, their parents to pass away so you can take their house, take their car, you can take their, their bank account. Oh, I get it. I so get it. But I recognize it. And I also recognize those that say, they're, oh, yeah, I'm on JJ's, but I have a hold of license in some kind of therapy or in some kind of holistic allopathic and I'm sorry you can't serve two masters so that's why you see me get really on people who claim they have a, a medical license and want me to be like okay with that and me not want to challenge them say hey why don't you go and get rid of your license if you're not even using it oh but I'm not really a licensed practitioner I just qualify I'm qualified to do whatever I don't really that's you can justify all you want oh but I still buy into the holistic I still buy into the antibiotics. I want to sell life through death. That's exactly what the system does. And so, yeah, all of these, th you know why the hospitals are run by the, by the religious folk? Because, yes, the Catholics, they understand this. But they understand this in a way still selling death. It's the Pope and the Vatican understand the human sacrifice, which is why you have the way they do the cross. But it's, still, it's not like they're satanic. It's tied to Greek mythology. Every single God, if you want innovation, if you want to learn something, you got to give a pound of flesh. If you want to carry on your family name, then you got to give a pound of flesh from you and give it to your kid. You got to sacrifice everything about you and, and your life to your child. That's what sac human sacrifice is all about. When you have rampant reproduction, that ensures the system will get their pound of flesh. But yes, it still is a quid pro quo. You want, you want to learn innovation. You want to learn this. You want to have access to that you know, you want to be famous, then yeah, there's human sacrifice. So it's it's not too far from the possibility that, yeah, the Illuminati or whatever, the, the pejorative way of talking about the influential families. If you want to be have fame and fortune and you would sign that contract where you are now taking people's money by pretending or by influencing a, an image to 
to cause the fall of a, of a woman or a man, well, we'll give you millions and millions of dollars, but somebody in your family is going to have to basically be that, that sacrifice. And, and it happens at the, at the lay level. When you're, you know, when you're allowing grandma and grandpa to die, when you allow yourself to die, and you allow your husband and your wife to die, and you don't tell them about the JJs, they have their choices. You give them the choice, but if you don't even give them the choice, then you basically have sealed their fate. That's human sacrifice, is when you keep people in ignorance. And so that's what the gods did. They kept the people in ignorance, so that way they can keep taking their pound of flesh. Oh, it's okay to die. Yeah, it's part of life. Go, go, go give them to oncology. Go give them to the cannabis. Go give them to the turmeric and the honey and the apple cider vinegar. G give them to that homeopathic that's going to give you an elixir. Oh, yeah, that's right. We're going to train little demigods of death to go and sell people their pills or powders or supplements or MLM products. And then, hey, let's, let's create an image. Let's put them in a nice car and nice haircut and pretty clothes and nice skin and make them all skinny and do their little workout routines and sell an image so you can sell a flipping supplement or a flipping concoction to then accelerate the mortality rate. And your friends and your family and you are so happy to do it because guess what you get? You get money. You get not only their essence and their energy and the social capital, but you get their money. And that is the very root of human sacrifices when you are willing to forego all morals because you want that almighty fucking dollar. And so that's why I get disgusted with people who are throwing their licenses in my face. That's why I got disgusted with that chick that was purposely triggering me, purposely trying to freaking see if I was going to hold fast to my ideals and my belief systems. And she lost. She's out of the group. She'll do the protocol, probably enhance her holistic ways. But and she'll still have her licenses to be qualified to destroy somebody. That's why I'm just like, <laughs> that's why I don't really care if I piss off the religious folk. I don't care if I piss off the holistic. I don't care if I piss off everybody. Because you say you want to live and you're doing everything completely the opposite. Well, I can't feel sorry for you. I'll freaking hold your ass accountable if you come in my world and my face and try challenging me with all of your bullshit. Yeah, I'm swearing because I'm just like, like, oh my God. And if you can't see it for what it is, then that's fine. That, then you can be the demigod of death. You know, everybody has to have find something they're good at. But nothing is for free. Everything requires a pound of flesh, even if the pound of flesh is representation, representation of currency, as well as blood, sweat, and tears. So you can give your pound of flesh, but can you regenerate? See, that's the thing that you were never taught. That's why the holistic allopathic and all the Reiki artists and all the Ascension people with all their little massage, they're releasing all this energy and they're taking your money, taking your energy, but they're not giving you any way to regenerate. They're just taking and taking and taking and taking all the different influencers out there all over YouTube. They're taking your energy, taking your money, taking your time, taking your very sanity. And that is the essence of human sacrifice. When you don't give you don't give people the opportunity to give back. Not like, okay, you give me your pound of flesh and I'll give you some money. Oh yeah, can you freaking eat money? Can you eat money? <laughs> You're not teaching them how to use that money to go buy some cabbage water and salt, release the excess, deal with your pain, eat the freaking food supply, stop playing the discrimination game and on your activist campaigns. Stop buying into the human sacrifice on so many different indirect levels. Oh, but it right. You get money for it. I'm sorry. You get status. And so, yeah, I'm watching all this. So all these demigods and the gods from today, like right now, all your friends and family are playing little demigods and gods. That's what happened way back then. The same thing happened way back in Christopher Columbus when they came in or were the gods to the indigenous folk. And then they bartered back and forth and taught each other stuff. And they made, you know, maybe there were some sacrifices, too. Oh, yeah. Medieval times were huge sacrifices. The, 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 the Indians were sacrificing people. So many different cultures learned that from the gods. The Hindu culture, the Hindi culture, whatever, all the Asian culture, like Macedonians, the Greeks, the Romans, all came, we all were basically visited and were created by the same created or given life to by the same gods that have a representation in different cultures. And yes, 
human sacrifice was number one because you had to pay for their innovation. They weren't going to give that shit to you for free. Ain't nothing for free, honey. You think, you know, getting everything. I mean, the thing is, even though nothing's for free, you have the ability to regenerate on your own. That's what you're not told. That's what I'm trying to now finally the missing piece that y'all don't get. Not all of you, but most of you don't get is that you can regenerate on your own without having to take from somebody else. Okay. And so like, you know, when, when the Indians or whoever are atoning for taking an animal's life so they could eat it, they do, you know, have a moment of silence because they don't know else to, how else to atone for taking an animal's life. The animal was thriving and now they're dead to feed the Indians. And the Indians are using the buffalo skins as, as you know, clothing and whatever. And, and that's how the Indians are able to get by and still atone for taking something. But now, you know, we have biotech and Bill Gates, who is right now on his way out the door, poor guy. And we have biotech that says, okay, maybe we don't have to have animal sacrifice. Maybe we can bioengineer and take all the necessary elements that you would find in a meat or find in you know, whatever, and it would be put into a bioengineered food that you'll be able with J juice and with managing your predispositions, deal with all of the different food supply. If you can't handle meat, then how are you going to handle bioengineered meat? If you can't handle the food supply, then of course you can handle the, the bioengineered stuff because it's all the same stuff, but it's just in a different formulation. And so I think our society is heading in the right direction, but we have a lot of very archaic, very bloodlust, energy lusting people who are fine with sacrificing their friends and their family so they can get that pound of flesh, even if it represents the almighty, almighty dollar so they can go get a trinket, a bauble. And that's why I posted on there those four little vignettes of human sacrifice. You have the Incas just cutting into someone, just very archaic. You have the surgeon that's cutting into somebody and say, oh, I'm saving your life by taking your energy. And then you have some Reiki artist that's like messing with your chakras, taking your energy. And then you have some motivational speaker that's like, oh, yeah, if you, if you do this and get this operation, you go and sell this and you go and do this and you go and sell this, whatever. You'll be just like me, all successful and beautiful and with a nice car and a great jet set lifestyle and, and just dangling the diamonds. And so that way you're, it, 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 it makes you feel better for taking the energy and money from your friends and family, basically sacrificing them. And so I have no problem mentioning, I have no problem covering this, but I think the Bible definitely, you know, uh, there's is there definitely some truth in Adam and Eve, but Adam and Eve was, you know, was not the fall of mankind. The fall of mankind was when they attacked poor Jesus. They, they tortured Jesus and made him a martyr. Okay. And they have his blood and all that stuff just hanging in the Catholic church and even in the Christians, whatever. And they're celebrating his death. And so no Christians claim that they're not satanic or claim anyone else is satanic when they're worshiping someone that's dead. When we worship dead people, whether it's JFK, Martin Luther King, or whoever, we're worshiping someone that's dead and we're not moving forward. We're basically saying it's okay to sacrifice people. It's fine that there's historical figures that gave us a foundation. Does it mean that we sacrifice or um, promote that it's okay to sacrifice people to get ahead. But that comes with mortality. When, when we have so many people reproducing and just taking and taking and taking and taking, I guess that's the only way that the system can get their pound of flesh yet again, is to sacrifice somebody so, so the system can advance. And so maybe it has to happen, but maybe it doesn't. Immortality, we probably wouldn't have this because you wouldn't have people glitching or taking or sacrificing people because, you know, we would be able to give back and we wouldn't have to, you know, lose ourselves in the process. See, you know, sometimes giving back can be more than what you're able to afford. So that's why they tell you, go take from somebody else because you can't possibly afford what really what it costs to actually do this. And so when somebody is living indefinitely, they're able to give back over a long period of time versus trying to get someone to owe everything in their short little lifespan, which I guess I could see that. I could see that as an interesting theory. But neither here nor there, right now is where we're at. And you have the chance to at least scratch the surface and do the jages, tell your friends and family about it, be a fucking example. But I know it's much better to be, you know, you know, all in your little 
fantasy world, starry-eyed, sacrificing your kids to the system, sacrificing grandma, sacrificing grandpa, sacrificing yourself, and then, you know, and then that way, you know, you, you feel better that you never really faced up to what you could have been, and you're okay with that. I don't know. I'm, I'm whatever. I'm going to go smoke a cigarette. I'm kind of upset. Bye.